The Team Never Quit podcast is sponsored by Navy Federal Credit Union. Learn how you can earn up to three times the points on travel and more with the flagship credit card at NavyFederal.org. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Team Never Quit podcast. We have got a great guest mm-hmm. lined up for you guys in the house, in the studio, Carrie Mills is the widow of Special Operations Chief Stephen Matt Mills, a Navy SEAL who died in Afghanistan while serving his country. Following his death, she realized there was a desperate need within the Special Operations community for an educational platform regarding estate planning. Carrie decided to go all in and graduated in May of 2021 with her Juris Doctor. Carrie, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thanks for having me, guys. Yeah. Welcome. Hi. All right, I've got a Patreon she question looked- for you guys before, hey. before we get too deep in the fun stuff. If you could have an endless supply of food for the rest of your life, but could only choose one entree and one side, what would it be? I hate the food question. I know, because there's so much good food. Fried chicken and macaroni and cheese. That's yours, huh? That was quick. All day, man. I do like that. Is this going to me, too? It's you, yeah. too. Okay. You're in the room. <laughs> well, I mean. Oh, don't gosh. go, don't dig, start digging in going, well, no. do, do, do you gain weight or no gain weight? Is no, I can no. eat and listen to that? I think mashed potatoes have to oh, be yes, for Oh, yes, for me. sure, for sure. I, I was going to say, because it's normally green beans, mashed potatoes, mac and cheese, and fried chicken, but mm. he said no, two. Two. Just two, I know. And, and I think I have to go with something. We had meatloaf last night, and Ooh. I could probably eat. No, I love meatloaf. Meatloaf is good. I love meatloaf. for Salisbury steak and... Leslie loves me. I hate I think, I think really? that you can do wow. that all the time. You I think can do it, it all, all the time. All the time, you know. Look, gravy, the macaroni and cheese, and gravy with the mashed potatoes and steak. Yeah. I, you know, I just do you like a cheese. savory meatloaf or a sweet kind of ketchup powered meatloaf? S- savory. Yeah. All right. Wrap it in bacon. So oh, you're not. That when sounds good. I'm right. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hungry. When's the last time you had? I'm starting thinking of fried chicken. Oh. Okay. <laughs> And the Dude. reason I didn't say steak is because fried chicken's got the salty and the crunch, and it was oh, yeah. a lifetime thing, right? I, I had something the other day. Because you can I, take the skin off. This and, question comes in because I was just had something the other day. I was like, you know, this could be an any time, all the time. Now. I feel like. What was it? Well, I guess a taco salad. Like, if I had to eat something, like, all the all the time, everything's in there. <laughs> I think I get bored. So it was balance of nature. If it's any good. <laughs> she will see me just taking them pills Major. all the time. I take them suckers all the time. Okay. What do you got? Chicken fried steak, mashed potatoes. Because chicken fried steak, like, same thing as chicken fried, or, you know, chicken fried chicken. You can peel off the skin. Yeah. You get you're steak, insul- though. You're, you're insulting yourself. Chicken fried steak is not the same as fried oh, chicken. I know, but it's chicken fried steak. It's steak and oh, no, chicken fried. Uh, all right, so I'm going to I'm gonna tell you guys a story that involves Matt. Okay. So we're early on dating. He says, let's go grab some lunch. Go grab some lunch. We go to this place on Coronado. I couldn't, I couldn't tell you where it was. It's by where the cow is on the street. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, right there. So we go in. It's this little diner. Sits down. They order. Well, it's all changed now, apparently. I, I, I was there the other day. There's all kinds of stuff. Yeah. I haven't been there in years. So we sit down and he orders chicken fried steak. I'm like, okay, cool. Comes out. I said, that's the biggest piece of chicken I've ever seen in my entire life. And he looks at me. Blinking his eyes, like, what the hell are you talking about? He just rebooted his system. <laughs> yeah. And I looked at him, I'm like, I've never seen a piece of chicken like that big ever. He said, It's chicken fried steak. And I said, Apparently, I'm missing something. I don't know what that <laughs> means. That he said, This is steak, baby. It's not chicken. And I was like, Oh, all right. Oh, okay. Yeah, who, so, they, for all the listeners out there, Carrie is a brilliant chicken. lawyer, but she is the. <laughs> She is a petite, beautiful little blonde. Yeah. Where are you from, <laughs> Carrie? Why would you not understand? Yeah, yeah. Help me understand. Yeah, that's, a good, mean, that's a good pivot question there. I'm born and raised California. Yeah. Where? Northern, Cali- Northern California. Where? <laughs> and then between Sacramento and where? Sac- Sac- <laughs> cool California. C O O L. Really? That is what legit. I'm legit. That's cool. what I want to hear. Yeah. That, that's cool. Yeah, yeah, it is cool. I grew up about 20 minutes from where gold was discovered in Coloma. Huh. Yeah. Sutter's yeah. Mill. Area. Fascinating, fun little fact. Nice yeah. fact. Fifteen hundred people, blinking light, no grocery store, two bars in a deli, gas station. You've been home. When's the last time you was home? 
I mean, is that thing grown at all or is it still something? I think we have a grocery store now and a subway. Oh. Uh, well. And I think it's a stoplight, not a blinking light anymore. And when we mean subway, <laughs> we mean the restaurant, not the underground. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Yellow and you green. You know what I'm talking That's, about? Yeah, yeah exactly. The sandwich shop. Not, not that far advanced. We're talking about the sandwich shop. Yeah, yeah. Chicken fried steak. Because that's what we have out here. The that's subway a, is the... Because these chicken's big down there. That's right. It's a big chicken. <laughs> that's a big chicken. Well, you know, in some restaurants now, and it has chicken fried chicken, chicken... That, that, that messes everything up. It's either... It's just chicken fried steak. Mm -hmm. No, chicken I could probably chicken. go... What was there. yours? Chicken fried steak, mashed potatoes. <gasps> yeah. What's yours? I don't know what tacos. Mm -hmm. I think I could do tacos. Yeah, I had tacos. tacos. It was Taco Tuesday the other day, and I had the, what, the Dorito... Went Taco okay. Bell. You went to Taco Bell. So good. Hey, I still do like a Dorito. Dude, loco, taco, I haven't had Taco, taco Bell. Bell. So since good. High school. Oh, hey, you know that crazy Your stomach chicken craving you. we get? <laughs> God, <laughs> yeah, right. Huh? I had so I had that crazy chicken craving, and I I went over and they have a Taco Bell and a Kentucky Fried Chicken. Yeah, together. <laughs> So they, call it, they call it the pearly gate. I mean, is that, what's called, is that what it's called? The pearly gate? If it's not, it is now. <laughs> Holy shit. There's a pearly gate right there. That's damn sure almost hey, happened. we invented that. <laughs> we freaking invented that. I think we Copyright? Should, uh, Copyright, right? Yeah. Yeah. Trademark. Yeah. Nice well, word. We've got a lawyer here. Bro. Freaking pearly gate. <laughs> no. Man. That's, that's tough. Not technically, right? Not technically. That's right. pretty tough, man. Anyways, yeah. I got sucked in over there. I was heading for the chicken, and I saw the Dorito taco. I've ne never had one. Wow. The Wait, Dorito taco. Off is... mil Dude. It's money. They freaking come out of that window, bro. <laughs> it's real good. I had a, I had a box of them. <laughs> There's a freaking box of them. It's good. You know what I'm talking You can get a box of yeah. suckers. Oh, yeah. I didn't know what to do with myself. <laughs> I pulled over. <laughs> it was so good. And I just, I mean, when, you're, when they're fresh out of that window. He intended yeah. to share God with the dang. family, but he did not. <laughs> when it heats up those Dorito chips, yeah. that, that when I... Mm. <laughs> Mm -hmm. No, right. We didn't go right. What's it, what'd you call it? <laughs> Pearly Gates. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's good. Oh it's my good. Because we get we get Mark's and I both. I get an annual this, craving for Kentucky Fried Chicken. I like mean, an insatiable. I gotta have All Kentucky stop. Fried Chicken right now, and I mean a bucket. Yeah. I'll order a bucket of drumsticks, <laughs> and I'll wait for them to. Well, you ought to hear it when you order that. I'll fill that freaking bucket up for a drumstick. So we don't have that, bro. I'll wait. <laughs> you can, I mean, mouth Break watering like something the moon change kind of appetite. It's the craziest thing. Have us do this once a year. <laughs> I won't touch uh, it. Anymore. We digress. <laughs> Carrie, welcome to Team Never Quit Podcast. I'm your host, Morgan. Freaking pearly good. Good Mark, put it all over here. That was a good. Uh, that was a good one. <laughs> yeah. Okay, okay, so you're from cool California. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How'd you wind up there? How'd you wind up, cool you wind up surf? No, we're in the mountains. Uh, so we're about oh, an hour and like, hour and twenty from, minutes to South Lake Tahoe. No, oh, how far are you from Santa Cruz? Three and a half uh, hours. Yeah. Oh, so you grew up snowboarding? No, I love my, my favorite. My St. Louis Obispo, <laughs> all that all that mountain area up there. I think it's beautiful. It's so beautiful. It really it was a great place to grow up. I mean, when I say small town, you everybody knew everybody. So. Mm -hmm. All, I mean, if you were going to so and so's house, you know, you, the parents would call the parents, knowing that yeah, what y'all right? mm -hmm. were doing. Like country. And, when you hear California, mm -hmm. you don't think you hear SoCal and then the city. That's right. That y'all's area completely gets overlooked, and I don't know how y'all do that. How y'all either hit, keep it hidden or the, or the, and y'all don't talk about it. But man, it's beautiful. That's good. Up there. You know what? It is. That way, nobody migrates that way. That's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What did you do when you were a kid? Sports. I did play volleyball. Mm -hmm. I played You're volleyball. Tall. Yeah, the uh, school thing. Yeah, doing school and then club ball. I played a little bit and I quit. Started of making money. Who did you make money? I just was a kid waitress, and then after I graduated from high school, I went. I got in the car business. In the car business. Mm -hmm. Sold cars. I did not sell cars. <laughs> Wait a minute. I was going to say used. Are you a used car salesman? No. I'm, well, I mean, this is what I joke with people. One about, of my favorite right? movies, by the way, used cars. <laughs> if you haven't seen it, Kurt Russell, good job. 
It's been a while, but well, it's a good movie. Yeah. <laughs> well, I joke with people all the time. I said, wow. I said, maybe I'm like the absolute sleazeball. I said I was in the car business for 10 years, and then I decided to go on the other side, and I'm going into the legal services, which like people put in the same category <laughs> yeah. of like, think of like 1975, like slick back, like car dealership. Oh, yeah. And then you've got- with, and the, then, with the coat and all the, yeah, yeah, and then you've got the attorneys who get, you know, the bad rap out there. So I was like, man, maybe I'm just like a- What'd you do in the car business if you didn't sell cars? Uh, you uh, mechanic? No, no. <laughs> I mean, that would be cool. Test driver. No, I was in customer relations and then I got on the, like the CRM side. So the, what does that mean? So you guys hate me. So when you buy a car and then you get all those automatic emails, it's like, thank you for coming in. It's now it's time for an oil change. You're at 3,500 miles. That's or, you? I said all that stuff up on the back You're end. The one. Yeah. Yeah. That was me. <laughs> what was your first, <laughs> first job? First for Waitress. shoveling shit. Oh, uh, nice. Did you grow up on a ranch? Uh, well, my mom rode, she rodeoed for years. My mom did. And then. Oh, wait, uh, that changes things. <laughs> so you, you, you come from a rodeo family? Uh huh. My oh, mom. So my dad's a heavy truck mechanic. He rode dirt bikes and like race cars down on the quarter mile. My mom <clears throat> was a horse lady. And so I got the best of both, world, both worlds. I'm the only child. So my dad was going to be damned if I didn't know how to like do a brake job. And my mom right. was I forgot like, how lucky Matt was when he freaking got you. <laughs> I forget not. I forgot all that. Go ahead. That's very kind. That's You're very welcome. kind of you. It's uh, it was very very handy when um, y'all would like you know take off out of town and you know ten minutes later as soon as you guys are wheeled up something breaks. I mean that's uh, how it always happens, right? That's it. And you, you get you, you like get wheels down wherever you're going, and then there's a voicemail, and it's like the the dryer shit the bed. <laughs> What am I going to do? And you guys are like, what, what could I actually do for you right now? I'm, I'm umpteen hundred miles away. What could I possibly be doing for you right now? That actually, that actually happened. The dryer, he was gone for probably, I swear, it was like two days. And I went, found a used dryer, loaded it in the back of the truck by myself, unloaded it out of the truck by myself, got it in the house by myself, realized that the plug wasn't the right kind of plug yeah, on the electric. wall. I, re, I rewired it and then plugged so now it you in. you understand what we do while we get pissed and how things wind up the way they are. You're like, oh, I can completely understand why that plug is in there like I that. I actually did that same. I brought a set that I had to same. have once at home and it didn't have the Dude. That wrong adapter on the back. Mm -hmm. The worst cool. is when you tell yourself ahead of time. Like, I should probably check that just to make sure. Yeah. Who knew? You're like, nah, that'd be good. Nah, man, it's <laughs> good. Same, 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 town. same. Every same town, yeah. same town. I'm going to put that out every time. <laughs> Usually that first thing that crops in there is the good idea. <laughs> that's that's the God wink, right? Like, this is how you do it. And the rest of that stuff is like how we could get it done. And it just folds from there. Yeah. So how'd yeah. you end up in... When did you head down to South 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 Carolina, South California, Southern Cal, SoCal, so the South Carolina? So South Carolina. I started making <laughs> I started making my way down there. So I, I started out in the car business in Northern California, um, just outside Sacramento, and then I got a job in San Jose, and I worked there for a little bit, and then um, just moved down to be closer to my mom and grandma. So okay, they so were down there. In relation to San Jose, what are the sizes of the, when you say those cities in California? A mm -hmm. lot of people, when you talk about big cities or you say something in California, it's all big. Right. But a lot of those towns are smaller. Yeah. It's like we live around in here. Mm -hmm. Like Cypress size, right? Tomball kind of thing. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. Northern California, you have a lot of really small towns that, you know. You and there's a do. gap between them. Yeah. Like wood, the further you get up there, the mountains will divide them. It's, it's really cool. Yeah. Beautiful. Well, I grew up um, on the American River. So if you needed to go to the grocery store that you couldn't get something in the like little gas station you know, deli mart down the, in the town, which you never knew if it was going to be expired or not. But, and you got behind the logging truck, it was 45 minutes. Windy roads. Mm, I mean, yeah. cutbacks. I think I see a lot of us gravitating towards that. That small town, like you better go get the produce from your town. Like shop local. That's right. If you need something big, quick in a hurry that comes in the catalog, that's fine, right? But I mean, usually everybody in the, in the town, there, there's something to that, keeping that going. I like it. It's a good place.
All right, guys, got to take a second to thank our sponsors over at Sunday Scaries. We all deal with a little bit of Sunday Scaries, am I right? Sunday Scaries are those, oh shit, stressful, nervous, can't sleep, dreadful feelings that hit you on Sunday evenings when you think about the impending doom of work tomorrow or school or just whatever life has got you thinking about. And unfortunately, you can feel that same pit in your stomach pretty much any day of the week. But fortunately for us, Sunday Scary CBD gummies were made to defeat the crap life throws at us. These are the perfect CBD gummies for professionals on the grind, super mom, students, party animals, regretful drunk texters, and everyone in between. Here's the deal. I don't relax well. I've got a crazy life. You guys know I do the podcast. I run a business. I do a couple of other podcasts that are business related. I could probably go on for days, but no one's here to listen to that. It could be hard to shut off my brain and chill. And I think that a lot of times I overthink. I end up stressing myself out. And Sunday Scaries vitamin boosted CBD gummies are my. So for our listeners out there, Carrie's a, a widow. Like we said in the intro, but uh, one of our good buddies, Matt, was killed. And. So how did you end up, because it's got to be a funny story, because he's a different breed of human being altogether. God rest you, I love you, bro. Um, how'd you guys run into each other? There needs to be a book written about meetup stories. Like, how, They're all different. And they're all great. One. Yeah, they're good, right? It's a good one. Um, it actually involves um, a friend of ours who um, I worked with his wife at Auto Trader. So I left the car business, started working for Auto Trader Print. The magazine? The magazine? The magazine. Damn. Yeah. Are you kidding me? No, I'm serious. <laughs> Classic. I'm serious. Yeah, absolutely. That sounds freaking Jay. made up, dude. Hey, look over there, like the checklist for, for if a chick saying, what do you do for a living? I work for Auto that Trader. should have been. You know, I like to work, work tinker on the dryer. That's something Brandy should have said to, Joe, to Joe Dirt. Right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what do you do? I work for Auto Trader. <laughs> Brandy from Joe. If you, in case Don't anybody can't up. see us, that's what's happening right here. <laughs> Blonde whole, hair, everything. This whole thing's Sit playing across. out like that's Xander. Right. Only <laughs> rings <laughs> twice. Xander's right next to Joe Dirt. Wait, wait, wait. What's happening? Wait, wait. wait. You work for Auto Trader? For real? So her husband... Was active duty SEAL. And so. Who's that? Uh, Matt Lennig. Really? He lives right there. You know, he just moved I in. Know. He just moved here. <laughs> I know. Okay. I know. I know. I, I just... can't wait till he starts spreading his wings and getting out and moving around. People are going to love this dude. Yeah. That's okay. That's yeah. a real small world right yeah, there. Yeah. Super small. Didn't know that. No. Yeah. Super small. So um, I was going through a breakup. He told me that he was going to go to Vegas to figure things out. I figured that we were probably done. I Going mean, to Vegas. You know. it's, a, it's a great place. Just in case anybody's wondering if, they, if that's the line you get, that's what that means. I mean, <laughs> um, pack, don't go there pack, and work shit out. Shit. No, no. Yeah. So, um, so I had already made it up my mind that we were done. And Matt was in town from the East Coast doing some, he was doing stat- <laughs> static line jump master training school out mm-hmm. in El Centro. So he was there for three weeks. And so um, I would plan on laying on the couch for, you know, the whole weekend. I didn't have anything to do. And um, they called, that couple called me and they said, we're going out. There's some guys in town from the East Coast. Let's go. And uh, I was like, no, I'm going to I'm gonna stay home. And uh, Matt got on the phone and he said, I'm going to be at your house in an hour. If you're in your pajamas, that's what I'm going to shove you in the backseat of the car. And, and he would have absolutely done that. This is all about this is caressing, loving Matt Mills. No. Coaxing. No, Lennox. Oh, no. I hadn't met oh, Matt Lennox. Mills. Yeah. Lennox ah, said, I'm gonna shove you in the car. Matter. We're going out. So we uh we he shows up, we go out, we go to um the keys of all places. I've never been. Never been. Oh, Walk in, peace. sitting there, we're chatting and uh get a drink. And this guy comes up and sits next to me and he's profusely sweating. I mean, sweating <laughs> like I've never seen a human sweat in my life. And I'm like, hi. Like, hey, you need I'm, some water? I'm Matt. Nice to meet you. <laughs> I'm like, oh, really nice to meet you. And he goes, really sorry. I'm sweating so badly. He's like, I just uh, just got done running on the beach. And I was like, what kind of pickup line is this? But he was dead serious. He had just got run on the beach. And uh, that was how I met Matt Mills. He sat down right next to me. Come to find out later on. Don't make me peas. Yeah. I know it. Yeah. I know. Uh, should have been a Tip- red flag right there. <laughs> Typical. I'd never been to that place. I, you guys, I didn't know what a Navy SEAL was. Like, I had no idea. Really? I had no idea. Like, I'd met- I mean, I say it that way, but I'm, but I mean, being from California is what I meant. 
yeah, Northern California, I mean, grew up an incredibly patriotic family, like stand behind our troops 100%, you know, American flag in the front yard. But I did not know what it needed to do. I mean, I had no idea. I'd met this one gentleman, Matt Linig, and that was all I knew. I didn't know anything about it. So then I'm surrounded by all these guys. And then, you know, that was kind of. He's kind of one to one to know, though. You, that could be a good, you know, Matt. And yeah. Both of it was them a good were, time. Yeah, it was a yeah, good time. Yeah, sure. And so come to find out later on, my Matt, Matt Mills, was there was um, Johnny Foss was there and Matt Mason and both of them were both on extortion. Mm -hmm. and they were they were there doing static line to a master training school as well. And my Matt had gone up to John Foss and was like, dude, uh, let's rock, paper, scissors to see who can go talk to that chick. <laughs> Talking about me. I found this out later. <laughs> like, I had no idea. It's really technical. <laughs> it goes into all the work we put into. Yeah, to I mean, I done. guess so. And uh, John Foss, the kind man um, that he was, he declined. And so Matt said, ha ha, you lose. And then he came down and sat next to me. And that was, that was pretty much it. That was I, it. I think you might have been Knowing you, not knowing you how I know you, I think you, you landed the right one because Foss, he was such a quiet kid. Mm -hmm. <laughs> when I ended up moving to Virginia Beach, I didn't have a place to live. So I moved in with John and I was John's roommate. So John and I were roommates. Um, oh, that's awesome. Yeah, that. that's good. How, that's um, good. so how long did you and Millsy date before you guys got married? Got married, yeah. Well, it was just over four years. So we did everything backwards. So Matt, when I met Matt, he was going through a divorce. He's got two kids from a previous marriage. And so um, we dated for a couple of years, found out that I was pregnant. So we did everything backwards, got pregnant, had the baby, got married in 2011 in February, and then he was killed. So it was, it was four years, four and a half years total. How old was Cash when Matt was? 18 months. Yeah. He's a little bitty guy. Yeah. He's huge. Seventh grader now. I know it. I know he's it. He's incredible. So he, tell, <clears throat> t just if you wouldn't mind, here's where, here's where your story transitions. Okay. Right? Because um, I mean, 31 men died that day. And what? I just remember being in, in, on the East Coast and, and seeing because our community comes together very well and and gets around the spouses but we know and i went through this with marcus during red wing it's a very aggressive coming together mm -hmm. and then it is a and then it is a slow kind of everything goes back but and then you're kind of yep by yourself yep it's true. i remember i remember hanging around with you and some of the other ladies out there i remember you talking about putting all this together because you started a foundation first, right? I did not. I I thought I was going to start a foundation first, go 501c3 first. And then I realized that it was better to do it this way. Mm -hmm. So um, if we're getting into my never quit story. Go for it, it. Was a, um, it was a solid eight and a half year road that I'm still on. So when um, extortion happened and um, they came and notified, I mean, you're, trying to wrap your brain around what actually just happened. I mean, I, I try to explain it to people. I'm like, if you could ima imagine in like one breath how your life changes. Like I, in one sentence, I went from a wife to a widow to a single parent, literally with a knock on the door in one sentence. And you're trying to wrap your brain around that. And they're asking, you know, where's his will? Where's the life insurance policy? Where's all these things? And you're like, uh, I'm not 100% sure, right? Mm -hmm. And so once you kind of get your way, you've got a, a, you know, a casualty team that's helping you along the way, <clears throat> guiding you as much as they possibly can. But in our situation, it was such a huge loss. So many. They were scrambling to find people because, I mean, you guys have the ability to write down who can come notify your family, to have a familiar face at the door, at three strangers. Three strangers at my door in blues. I mean, you know, you yeah, know. Probably what's because gonna... the names that were supposed to notify you were on the bird with it. Correct. That happened in a lot of cases. That was with those two. Yeah. 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 So um, 
once I got my bearings, I started talking to other uh-huh. um, surviving spouses. I realized that there really is kind of a missing gap, right? So you can't technically require anyone to have a will. However, they push you guys and they say, you know, go down to the JAG to get your your documentation, your will. JAG's a military lawyer. Correct. So you go down and you update your information or get your documentation taken care of. But um, what I realized is there is an educational piece that's missing. So it's not just a will that you have. There's other documentation, the power of attorney for your financial power of attorney. There's the medical power of attorney. There's your, you know, directive to physicians to tell them if you take life support or not. And then you've got your guardianship for your kids. And so we don't teach our service members this. And I realized that that should probably change considering the fact that Matt had a will that was written and he had a clause in that will that dedicated, that was a hundred percent dedicated to taking care of his kids from his previous marriage and how he wanted um, the funds or any, anything that they received monetarily from his estate to be handled. Well, you come over here and you come into a supplemental life insurance policy that's a legal binding contract between a service member and the actual company so what he wrote in the will he was not taught to write that in the in the language of his supplemental life insurance policy and so that entire clause was null and void so his wishes did not happen the way he wanted because they had to go, they had to hold out the contract. So I realized, oh, well, we should probably tell our service members this. This seems like it should be common knowledge. And so I said, well, what, what, what would I need to do to do that? And I thought, you know, maybe I'll be a paralegal and I can help. And then it just started kind of spiraling because I started talking to other spouses and they didn't know this stuff either. And I thought, we can't, we can't do this. We can't have this because it puts more on the person who's home, right? So the person who's the survivor, we've got to try and figure all this stuff out and we don't know what it means. And so I started, I was 31. I had a high school education and my transcript is pretty ugly. I'm pretty sure it doesn't look quite as good (laughs) as the the, the seventh graders back there that, uh, that, that I'm raising. And so, um, I started a community college, figured out, um, how to get into the university of Virginia, which if you just do your homework, it's, you, you can get there. And so I graduated. I was going to ask, is that as hard as everyone thinks? There's people who, for whatever reason, especially when they get dealt a bad hand, they're like, I, I can't get out of this. But it's, it's literally, is it just getting up and going over there and asking a question? Asking a question? What do you mean? Like how to, how, how to transition from that moment in your life to this. How do you start? I that? think it, to, to his point, when you're dealt, dealt a bad hand, people think, well, the college is up here. Mm-hmm. I have to be, people have to be smart. They have to be driven. They have to be someone that I was not. And so in, in that sense, they kind of walk away from it where, where, where you Really, y'all. That's me. Yeah. I am not the person. I standardized tests are not my forte. They are ugly. Do not give me multiple choice t- test. I will. It's not great. Um, I just there were days where I did not want to get out of bed. I'll tell you that. Um, what I realized about who I am is I'm a person who does what I say I am going to do, and I told everybody that I was going to solve this problem. And so I have worked for eight and a half years to solve this problem. It, it doesn't have anything to do with me. It has the fact that if I can keep someone from being or going through or having to figure out the way that I did, then I, it's worth it to me. 
All right, guys, I've got to take a second to thank one of our incredible sponsors, a product that is pretty compelling. It is called Magic Mind. It is the world's first productivity drink. And today we're recording this podcast a little later than normal. It's about 4.50 right now in the afternoon. Typically, we'd be recording these podcasts earlier in the day. So you might be wondering, how do you guys podcast from early in the morning to late in the afternoon without burning out? Well, I promise you it's not soda and it's not a thousand cups of coffee because I One, I've never been a coffee drinker. Two, sodas give me an incredible crash because of all the extra sugar. And so when Magic Mind reached out, they said they wanted to sponsor us. I was super excited about this product because I've heard a lot about it on other shows. I've seen it on YouTube. I was thinking, okay, it's about time. It's my turn to give this thing a go. Honestly, it's amazing. It's a product that's given me energy throughout the day. It's steady, especially whenever I've got a lot on my plate, whether it's podcasting or meetings or just trying to get all the work done that I have on my plate. I found that this... Well, that's not figuring it out. That's setting the base. I mean, when we started, look at our generation coming in. Because we can look back now. Yeah. Right. I mean, you can you can look back on all that chaos. They, they make mini series out of it now. I don't think anybody ever thinks it'll, they'll get the knock on the door. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, just how many, like, because we got hit, man. We get hit like hard. Like, y'all got. That went from having no background in that and no one even running it to y'all had not only someone trying to figure it out and set the base of it, but you had plenty of plenty of people to do. So I'm do I would it. I'm not comparing myself no, to no. anything you go to, but I got the same call sure. when they went down. Yeah. Right. And then of course they were asking me, where's all this shit at? And I was like, Sigh. But he's like, Well, you're we don't his you're that. his primary. I was like, Well, I don't know where he keeps it. Right. You, I gotta mean, be like, this is locker. The married guys are different than when you're not married, the funniest thing anybody would ever witness is when we fill out our wills. Oh. As single men, yeah. Oh, as a sing- the single you. guys. Oh no, no, Matt was married. I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you what. His there are was. some exceptions. <laughs> <laughs> he checked two boxes. One said "bury me at Arlington." The other one said "bury me in my blues." And then in his handwriting, it said "bury me with my flask." Yep. I'm going. I'm going to run into him one day. I'm going to see him. <laughs> We're gonna have a little <laughs> chat. We're gonna have a little chat That's about wild. that. You got guys who talking about flaming arrows. Oh over yeah, Mickey shit. Mouse. Oh, oh, I want, it's they wanted, so bad. It's so bad. They wanted Jimmy all the money. They wanted all the money that that a, a family receives if, if if someone dies in combat. To this one guy's like, I want it all spent on a party. Yeah, absolutely. We had one of our guys That's left like, each guy the, 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 his the money of their buds class, like two dollars and twenty eight cents. That's what I got from him, you know, and then. <laughs> We, most of these guys died. Like some of them, like, hey, you got to haul my ass up to Everest. Yeah. Mine, I wanted to be buried on the on the buds grinder underneath a pair of those feet, <laughs> of the frog feet. I mean, it's when you're single, you don't give a shit. No, and that, well, and that's <laughs> the thing, care, and that's the thing too, because it's cool, it, right? It's super cool, and there isn't anybody like regulating that. They're no, not, no, they're one, not coming no, back no, and being no, like, yeah. The hey. lawyer's not like, are you sure you want to be? Freaking- yeah, they, 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 they don't do that. They're like, oh, this is hilarious. You want to jump? You want That's to push awesome. your casket yeah, you out of a place? Awesome. Awesome. So, so it's to go highly back, illegal to do yeah. half of this stuff, anyway. Right. So to go back to what you say about nobody really thinking they ever got that knock on the door, I think it was different for me because I came in in 2008. So we we were done. That's early. Well, I'm well. I'm saying she's making people that already started dying by the time extortion happened i had been to more funerals than i had been to weddings and baby showers combined oh yeah oh, oh well that's that's we joke that all the time y'all realize that's like a sick joke to tell you, hey the only time i ever see you is a funeral i mean like, oh. i'll see you next time someone dies when was the last time you wore your blues yeah, oh so and so's funeral and you, or they're wedding. not washed or wedding, or wedding. Right. they're wedding, not right. washed let me clarify my point Pe- okay. people besides us mm. that live in this space People that are listening to this right now, I mean, I seriously would doubt my neighbors down the street. Oh, that's everything. a great point. Uh, yeah, a great point. We're, we're not even, you're not even talking Cheetah. civilians. Got I mean, it. people with civilians die, it's horrible. Right. We're, we're, we're just, if we squared away in the military like you have, it'll, it'll trickle out, correct? Yeah. Yeah, check. I mean, it, even if I wasn't able to infiltrate our community, there are 300,000 veterans in Houston proper. Is that right? Mm-hmm. Houston alone. That's not talking about anything. That's outside. how big our army is. We have three hundred thousand fools here, just meandering yes. around. That's awesome. Isn't that awesome? <laughs> I didn't know that. It's a lot. That's three hundred thousand. And I yeah. seriously doubt it. A vast majority of them probably think about doing doing all this, getting all this teed up. It, and it's because that 
and, and tell me if I'm wrong, but I think that the stigma that comes along with the state planning is that people think you have to have a pot full of money in the bank. Mm -hmm. And that's not it. That's not what it's about at all. It's, it's about setting up, it's setting up your legacy. So we need to change, we need to change the mindset. So think about, yeah. think about it this way. We're not talking about dying. We're talking about how we're going to take care of our children, how we're going to take care of our spouses if we're no longer here. Right. Cause we all hope that we live to 85 and we just, you know, yeah, yeah. die in our sleep, right, but yeah. that doesn't happen every day. So changing the mindset of what it actually is and how you want, how you want your kids. So think about this way. If, if, you know, if I was, you know, if cash was 18, my son was 18 and I didn't have any of this documentation, he's my only, he's my only heir. Like he would become my heir. So anything that I had because he was an adult would become his. Can you imagine an 18 year old getting everything that you have without yeah. setting it up? Guess where it's going to go? Exactly. Oh, sure. Exactly Absol where Absolutely. you think it's going to go. If you want to get rid of it, that's how you set it up anyways. 100%. So huh. if we change the mindset and think, oh, this is actually what we're doing. Yeah, we talked about that too with our with ours. Like, I mean, you don't get anything till your ass turns 40. Oh. <laughs> and then and then you then you gotta work it out work it out, work it. There's there's levels. I, I have it exactly set like you know what I'm talking about? Like you're, there's some levels. Yep. You get this, you get this much at this age. This you wanna be a real badass, age. you throw that uniform on for Uncle Sam for a few years, then we'll, you know, we'll coax you in there a little bit. You earn it back. Any any parent who who especially in our generation who has con amassed considerable wealth because a lot of them have. Mm. A lot of the military have too. Like how, and it's funny. It's probably like stunt parents because our kids will do something like, hey, that's good, but get out of the way. Watch this. It, it, it's incredible. And we were joking about it. The, the worst thing you can do is give your kid a brand new car, Ferrari, or they, they need to drive that junker at 16 to, so they'll have something to build up. If you got a lot of money, Put it in a weight, and they got to earn that, like with age. Mm -hmm. Don't ever throw an eighteen-year-old. You, you, well, you're seeing what's happening. Oh yeah. When those young kids get the become billionaires, then the concept of money goes away. Well, I mean, it, it, and it's not just it's not just children. I mean, look at our our um, like our athletes. You know, you come in, you you get a signing bonus. You're going, you get picked up by the draft. Oh, don't even you get, get a signing bonus. Yeah, Next thing you know, sure. you've got a, sure. a blown knee and you're not making twenty three million dollars anymore. And what now? Right. So yeah, the, absolutely, I agree with that one hundred percent. There should be a team step right in on them kids. It's like, hey, pff, this is what you've got. You got. College, yeah. yeah, yeah, that's good. Yeah, because at that age, and I don't care how much they complain at that age, you don't know nothing at that age. It's like, but you know enough to get spend that money the wrong way it should right. work for you the minute you get hurt uh, yeah i completely yeah. agree with that yeah so i worked for eight years to get there so i did i graduated from uva got myself into law school went to a teeny tiny little school. hey what's that feel like what when you get that letter in the law school yeah my experience is a little bit different because uh the uh multiple choice is not my forte so i had to take the lsat twice right and uh the the school that I applied to is this tiny little school in the southwestern part of Virginia. And if you guys believe that God has a plan, or we do. everything happens for a reason, I'll tell you what, I got one offer and it was from that school. And it was the best thing that could happen because it was a tiny school and it was just me and Cash there. And that town wrapped themselves around us and they supported me for three years. I mean, they were, I mean, they called Cash the Mayor. Sounds like Silvertown off of Joe Dirt, man. Uh, I'm telling <laughs> you. Like some, I'm yeah, telling you. It was the most, it, I mean, Grundy, I know they Virginia. exist. I know those towns are there. I know we have them. Those little you. bubble towns that you can't ever find. It's like right on the, you just. I mean, I'm you found you. one of them, huh? I did. My graduating class in law school was 55. Nice. Tiny. Everybody knows everybody. I lived across the Ooh, street so from the dean. you all have your own secret society there. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, everybody, I'm joking about that part, but that, that's cool. When you yeah. school like that, that many kids. I mean, you go down to, there's one restaurant, there's a Mexican restaurant in town. You go down there and your professor's sitting there and you can have, you drink a beer with your professor. You walk, you can literally walk into your professor's office, your, your law professor, which I, I mean, most people don't even know their professor's name because in law school, because they get taught by the assistant. You walk in there and sit down and be like, I don't get this. And they will sit down and they walk you through it. Nice. Yeah. But it was, it was um, overwhelming, right? 
Like so a little I, bit overwhelming when I got that call. Like oh, you're okay. in. All right, good. You're in. <laughs> oh shit, I made it. Now exactly. What? Now what? Shit. I, right? I love hearing about those moments for people. Like when you bust your ass and <laughs> that letter comes in, but hey man, you did. I was mowing the lawn. I was mowing the lawn and my phone rang and I was like, oh my gosh, this is coming from Grundy. Colin told me I, you know, I didn't make it. And they called me and they said, you're in. You're in. You're a Tillman scholar, right? I am a Tillman scholar. I was the first, from what I understand, I was the first widow to be chosen as a Tillman scholar. That's legit. Yeah. Congratulations on that. Thank you. So you went from high school education, not a good one. To I mean, a widow. It was a cool one, though. I mean, it was cool. So yeah, it right. was cool, right? Thank cool, you. legit. I so like cool. that. Come on, you can have it Good. right there. Thank you. You're welcome to widow, single mom, and now you are UVA grad, a Juris Doctorate. Yeah, that's armor. All that uh, that hard stuff in the beginning. That, I, it's I always mean, it, it, you always hear people like, well, you know, this happened to me. I just know everybody's got it in for me. I, I, I'm, I'm in my hole. I can't get out. But you're living proof. Have you turned around? And look at the stack you have now. Because looking where you started and looking at somebody like you now, like a boss, yeah. you can tell by the way y'all walk, man, when y'all come in. It, it's like a train. I'm not kidding. We can spot y'all a mile away. Looking back at yourself, now this is the hardest thing in I We talk about this all the time. I think about him, especially when he messes with me about it. I'm like, man, you know, you look back at them, what we are now and the kid you were, it's an impossible feat, you thought, mm -hmm. right? To, I get, to get to that to yeah. step. I remember that. the first time I had to write a paper for in UV, at UVA and it, it the minimum amount was eight pages and I remember sobbing I remember sobbing like what how am I gonna write eight pages like eight pages what am I gonna write eight pages on and I'll tell you what by the time I was in law school I I was writing bench memos for a Supreme Court justice in Virginia mm-hmm Reading 180. Pages. I was gonna say it's funny what you complained about in the beginning, like eight. Like, man, I would love to have eight pages. I'll sleep. tell you what, I can do oh, that. Now? I can do yeah. that. Eight pages. I can do that sleeping. I do that on my phone with text messages. If eight pages right. showed up, you'd be like, "What? Is, what is this joke?" I know I mean, I, it I, is I, wild. I You're okay. absolutely right, though, because you turn around and you look, and and sometimes, sometimes I have a really hard time. I I, I have the the uh, the creeping in imposter syndrome. I've got that. You know, it's not it's not a diagnosable thing, but a lot more people have it than you think. I mean, it's <clears throat> and that goes Excuse back me. to the Tillman. When I went up to their, they have a summer summit, and when I went there, I mean, you're you're in rooms with incredible human beings. I mean, people who are just astrophysicists at Harvard, good. like, and they and they, you know, they're all they're all veterans or veteran spouses. Yeah, and you're just like. What? You know, it's, it's, cool it's a crew. little overwhelming. Yeah, it's a great crew. <clears throat> it is we a got great a great crew. crew. Yeah. Let's take a second to thank our sponsors over at Navy Federal Credit Union. Becoming a member at Navy Federal Credit Union lets you experience more. From everyday commutes to your next big vacation, the flagship credit card earns you three times the points on travel so you can get rewarded for wherever you're headed next. Plus, their premium travel card has a low annual fee of just $49 and two times the points on all purchases outside of travel, meaning the rewards don't have to end even when the vacation does, sadly. Speaking of rewards, you can get a Navy Federal Auto Loan and reward yourself with a brand new car. Applying is easy. You can do it on their mobile app, online, or by phone. It is super fast. You can get a decision in seconds. Navy Federal has some incredible rates on auto loans. Plus, with their car buying service powered by True Car, you can shop, compare, and get upfront pricing on your next new or used car. Remember, at Navy Federal, our members are the mission. Navy Federal is insured by NCUA, open to the armed forces, the DOD, veterans, and their families. Flagship rates are variable. When the best part is after. When you when we're done and this you get into this part, what everyone got themselves into. You, you, you always hey, just that. remember you you say that about those people in that room. They're looking at you to say the same thing. I know. I I get hey, on. Look at I, look where I'm at now, right? I hear what they say. Yeah. All right. Well, we hear stuff about you all the time. The widow, y'all y'all. I mean, and that's how we refer to y'all. Anytime I when I'm bringing y'all up, man, or I hear something about y'all, y'all's crew, the widows. Y'all are unique in your envelopment. All of y'all were created at one freaking time. I mean, there's and there's two groups. There, yeah. There's the individual man, but y'all there's a pack of y'all. 
Yeah. And I mean, when we, when you, when seeing y'all walk around and when y'all start giggling and then doing whatever it is and create just to see what y'all can build and what you're capable of. I mean, I hear just kind of when Mel's talking about it, but y'all are something for yeah. sure. I think, I think for me, one of the biggest things was, is Matt sent a, he set a precedence. You know, he told me that when he wasn't there, I was the family representative. He never wanted to, he never wanted to go to work and hear about what's happened at home. And our business was our business. And he said that, and I have really made that a big, a big deal. Like, I don't have any stories to tell of Matt's because they're not my stories to tell. I, I couldn't tell your stories, even though I've been sitting around a table and I've heard them. They are not my stories to tell. And so it's a really big deal for me to 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 still live by that and still be a family representative. Right. I still have his last name. I still represent the family. I'm raising a mills and it's a big foundation is don't tell don't tell a story that's not yours. And so I live by that. And so I'm trying to carry on that legacy, Matt's legacy, and create this next generation of to where we can give back to our community. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's where we're all at. Yeah. I was talking to somebody this morning. He and I were going back. I was like, it, it's almost as if when we went, when we joined, came in. And that how hard we got hit. As our fraternity small. And I mean, they hit us with everything they freaking had. And then as we slowly triculated out, everybody went their own direction. Got real good at stuff individually. Yeah. And now everyone's kind of working themselves back together. It's like, yeah. hey, we're pulling this thing back together. Every component of it was designed for a reason so we could pass it down. It's like what Morgan said. He's like, on the onset, I mean, everybody, everybody's together. Right? Yeah, that's crazy, right? Right. But all those people who are coming together, there's most of them are survivors. So they go back to their families. They go back to their life. They Everyone. go back to being a Navy SEAL or, you know, active taking care duty, of their, taking, taking, care family, of their, taking care of their family family. business. Yeah, right. Yeah. And doing what they're doing. And then you're there and you're like, okay, I got to figure out my normal. Mm -hmm. What's my normal. Yeah. Right. What, what am I doing? So, and then I think that's where that kind of starts pushing me because everybody's finding their own normal, but it really is. You find, you find your like kind. Yeah. You oh know? yeah, 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 absolutely. You think that is this sometimes a, a curse? I know it could sometimes be a blessing, but sometimes it, it can be a curse. Oh, that's a gonna be yeah. a challenging question to ask. And I'm I'm an out obviously I'm an outsider. Yeah. Um, it happens so often for all of us. It seemed almost as like you guys close the doors on on yourselves. No, on not not, not on yourselves, but. You guys came, you guys huddled in and locked in just and grieved with each other and everybody else that was out here wanted to love on you. I don't know what to do. Kind of like couldn't yeah, get it. Yeah, we didn't know what to do, do, man. No, I didn't grieve until about a year and a half ago. Well, there's that. Because I made yeah. it, I made it my job. Yeah, I made yeah. it my job to be the family yeah, representative yeah. and then make my own normal. So, yeah, and man, I was like, oh, I'm going to get back. I mean, y'all do that anyways. Yeah. I'll so if you're trying to tell you to carry on, you're carrying on smartly and then there's that one gap and we're kind of that's what it is. We stick around like, they look like they're doing good. They're doing good. All right, we're going to step back then. And then there's that. Shit, they're not doing good. Yeah, they're not doing good. They're yeah. not doing good. They're not doing good. We missed it. Well, I mean, for me, it was. It was, it was a game change. It was, it was like a game face, game change. What am I doing now? And I just didn't. I just kept getting out of bed every day. That's, that's all I could. One foot in front of the other. And I'll tell you what. I was in law school. If you ever want to find yourself, you should go <laughs> into go the Appalachian Mountains during oh, COVID yeah, well, yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. in law school. And then, you know, Cash needed, he needed to be in school, but I couldn't be a school teacher, an online school teacher for a fifth grader and be in law school. So he, he came to Houston and was here and went to school. Yeah, online. We free state. Yeah. And uh, I'll tell you what, I, learned more about myself probably in that year 100 I, I was just thinking the same thing in my head i was like you know how much i learned about everything during covid and everything slowed back down you, you can put it in perspective 
I I remember being in this the driveway that I had concrete. It's next to this creek, and it'd be two o'clock in the morning. I couldn't sleep, and I'd be laying in that driveway looking up at the stars, thinking, "What the fuck am I doing?" <laughs> Honestly, you know. Yeah. Sorry, uh, grandma. Hey, hey, Sorry, grandma. Good. She's gonna listen yeah, to this. She, and she's she gets. Gonna, oh she's yeah, gonna right. grandma's gonna get you. <laughs> but just laying there and just thinking, "What am I doing?" Like. What have I been doing? What have I been doing? Who am I doing this for? Why am I doing this? Who are you, meaning myself? Digging the bottom of those questions is not really all that easy. No. It must have been a phase. We we're all, I would do the same thing. I'm sure you're still digging. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Learned a lot. It's like, it's like I came out of that. I got to the end. Of, I got to the end my dream point, right? Perry Mills LLC is created, like websites gone out, ready to go to start helping everybody. But it's like I did an about face and I'm looking backwards at all that time and like, okay, what are you going to do for you now? How are you going to start taking care of yourself? Oh, it's a pause moment. Yeah, Yeah. Yeah. because you got to, doors kind of kept open. I mean, like doors, kind of paths, Mm -hmm. I guess, presented themselves after like grad grad school and so on and so forth. Did you ever look up and say, all right, I, I got it. This is what I was going for. Now what? I'm, I'm there right now. You're doing the now what or you got something? Yeah. So you enjoying uh, it though? Yeah. No, no, I am. Because so, there's that. You know, so, when you write that out and you finally get to that moment, you can shotgun pass it just keep and keep going not even realize, man, what you accomplished. Well, I think like the end of the tunnel, you know, you get there, that light keeps getting brighter and brighter. Yeah, well, that's my point. But it's scarier and scarier and scarier as you get to that moment because you're like, well, now I now I have to produce. Like I said, I was going to do this. I've been running this run, and now I got now I got to do it. Now I got to show up. Yeah. So I'm here, but now I'm looking back at what are you, what are you going to do for you? How are you going to take care of yourself? How are you going to better you? You just you just grieve the loss of your husband, who's been dead for it'll be eleven years in five five days. Yeah, eleven years, and you you're just now you just last year really grieved that loss what are you gonna do for you now so i'm i spend a lot of time on that i'm gonna show up don't rush oh it. man this comes in phases that reflection time is important i mean you it's like getting dropped into a phase of, like a schoolhouse a training you didn't even know you were getting into you just all you had to do is survive that, that's how that, that was the point that's that's what chaos be. It's like that. Just get to this point. Just keep going. Because every time, it, right at the chaos moment, there'd be one little inkling that would drop in there and be like, "That's all I needed is that little clue, just to keep going." Until you get to the point where it's created, and then it automatically, life will automatically stop you like that. Like, all right, now you want to? Do, do you think you want to work with the community again, or are you just happy kind of down here? I'm trying. I'm trying to work with our community somebody asked me that i'd be like i'm staying away from that community i'm just like as far away as possible do whatever you want yeah no i think i think that what will end up happening is um y'all i mean i'm gonna get my name out there i'm gonna tell everybody what i'm doing i'm here i'm ready i mean i work for an attorney in, in downtown houston i know that's the best part about it it's like you live so we all live it's not that this is over when stuff like this when we switch it doesn't end the coolest part about it is most people in Houston now that you really don't have any idea how connected you are, girl. That's pretty cool. I, when, yeah. when people find that out, you know, you see one thing, oh, you did this. Like, yeah, and then they, they peer behind the curtain on you and see how where, where, where your blood runs to into this. And then deeper into all of that, that's, that's the stuff we live for. <laughs> yeah. No, it's just, it's, and I, I, I've um, partnered with a, an attorney in Virginia Beach who um, I trust he wrote my last will um and i have um another attorney in houston who has ties in san diego so i even though i'm not an attorney and i i cannot advise i can still work with all of those attorneys and i can still get it done so i think here in houston will be like i said there's 300,000 veterans so not all of them are navy seals or special operators but that doesn't mean that they don't they don't need education. So, you know, the the kind of three part of what 
I really see myself doing is education for our special operators in our community if if they'll have me, right? Mm-hmm. They have to say yes. They have to say yes to let me come in because they already have people who can do it. They have JAG. They have the they have the JAG and they have the paralegals on base that can help them. But let me come in and tell my yeah, story. A little, different. a little different coming at it from a, the, the angle you that you have. Well, you know, so hopefully, hopefully that can work. There's um, a difference between volunteering for it and going in and then you're you're just getting molded into it. Oh yeah. So Absolutely. That's completely yeah. It, it it yeah. It's uh it's it's like when I went into the bank. I wasn't on any of Matt's bank accounts. I went in the bank and they were like, Miss Mills, are you telling me that uh, Mr. Mills is no longer living? I said, That's correct. I said, We're gonna have to we're gonna have to freeze the accounts. I said, excuse me? I said, that's where our mortgage comes from. Like that's I'm I, I mean, I'm, I'm I work I work at a little place for thirteen dollars an hour and I'm I bartend on the weekends. Like, what do you mean? What do you mean I can't get to that money? You know, this is stuff that all needs to be taught. They'll freeze it until it goes through probate. I was talking to some guys the other day. They're almost all that should should be uh like when we sign in for four years when we're up four years, some guys there ought to be when you get when you're getting out, you have to sign up for there's a two year or three year, whatever it is to teach you how to get out. So there's no transition really. Yeah. You're protected till you get on your feet and, and, and you go. Yeah. Not only for you guys, but it should be for the spouses too. I mean it's that's a, what I'm talking about. One hundred percent. Both sides. Well regardless. If you're you're married, especially if you're married. I mean, it, you can't just turn them loose like that because there's a huge, there's, there's something in there that you're removing. That military thing, that's a, a safe, that's not just a safety blanket. That's a safety way of life, man. Mm-hmm. Want, and you can still communicate with everybody, but it's just not the same. Yeah. yeah. So, and then the, the last part is, you know, I like telling my story. I like, I like sharing my story. Hopefully somebody can, can see that, you know, I'm, well, a girl from cool California, 1500 people can, you know, who's dealt, you know, a, a car, a, a hand of cards that probably weren't all that favorable, but man, I'll tell you what, I bluffed for a long time. I <laughs> pretended I put on that game face and you, you play it like you're just hoping for the river to run and, and hopefully, hopefully somebody else will do the same. Oh, you go, man. That's what you, you got to say that. Otherwise people think you're born with it. That's the hardest thing is people look at the examples and they're like, oh, how do you do that? Because for me, that would be impossible. Well, that means it's possible for everybody to get your ass out there and do it. Some people. If I can do it, anybody can do it. I'll tell you that. If I could do it, 29 years old, with an 18-month-old baby, anybody can. Yeah. You gotta, you, there's, if there's a will, there's a way. Yeah. I mean, honestly. Well, we love you. Yeah, love you. Carrie, do you have a website yet that people can can find you I do. on? I do. Perfect. It's um Carrie Mills Estates S T A T E S dot com. And you could send me any kind of question that you have. If it involves advising you, I'll punch you to the attorney or get you an answer. But it's info at Carrie Mills Estates dot com. And um I'll happy to um answer any questions. I'll come tell my story, do lunch and learns. I mean, just just get the word out there, really. Just still putting that one foot in front of the other. Yep. Every day. Every day. That's awesome. How about social media? You on social media? Um, I have a LinkedIn. You can just find me at Carrie Mills on my LinkedIn. Perfect. Um, and uh, we're starting, you know, this is day four of my website being locked. So it was like perfect timing. Oh, yeah. We'll, we'll make sure that they can stay. We'll I mean, go out. I'm going to try to get this one scheduled within the next two weeks so that it kind of falls in good timing on, like yeah like either this wednesday six. or next awesome. yeah for whatever reason the last few months i've had a huge focus will shift for like taking care of our veterans pulling them all together taking all the stuff that we've done the charities that we've had over the years mm-hmm. kind of pull those together and, and make this thing streamlined to where there's not a gap yeah because one thing about the military and the spouses you they, you can train them that, that that gets overlooked. I mean, hell, it's if they're getting punched by something, something's whipping their ass. You didn't take the time to train them, right? And I, that just bothers me sometimes. Yeah, yeah, I agree with you. I agree. With you. you know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. and I get it. Wait, when you're out, you want to go. You're just like boom. But there's nothing wrong with the check in. In my a perfect world, like when those guys, when you get out, they need to stick. You get out near a military base, so your medical, dental, all this is right there. Yeah, and then you repatriate the town. 
from the inside out. Well, I, Morgan and I, we were laughing about it. I was talking to somebody. I was like, hey, you know how freaking terrifying you look? I mean, you, you got to go meet people. They're not going to come up to oh, you. Sure. Like, seal wives, no, that's the thing. But everyone's scared of you because of what you've been through, how tough, how strong a woman you are. The same with the guy. I mean, so you got to open like, hey, how you doing? You know, it's terrible, right? We don't Listen, do that. When I came into the community, nobody wanted me. That's I was the girl that Matt met out of town on a trip. I moved to Virginia. I'm like, you it's know. like your own buds. Oh. Y'all all have to go through some form of it. Oh, Mel had, I mean, that's awful. A, that, dude. We done? So, um, what, what you're doing is so, I mean, it's like you.